Tonight, it's good to be king, and for once, I'm not talking about Trump. Also tonight, there's wild fowl running among in my town and comparably in my country. And my thoughts on the problem with that fact eerily predate the armed insurrection down south, so you won't want to miss that. And also tonight, I don't like talking to conservatives mostly because of how they feel about guns. And conservatives don't like talking to me mostly because of how they feel about guns. So you won't want to miss my stand-up of a sit-down with the next Andrew Shear. You, you probably, probably clicked this thinking, thinking you found, found a bear having a good one, but instead you landed on, on the cold bear report. report. Welcome to the Cold Bear Report. I'm your host, His Royal Highness, Duzza the First. Now, nation, I know what you're thinking. When did that happen? Was there an armed insurrection? Did I miss something in the news cycle? Well, yes, there was an armed insurrection, but this has nothing to do with that. As I tape this, many of us are celebrating the Feast of the Epiphany, and a custom I was very recently introduced to involves a yummy dessert called Galette de Roi, which means Cake of Kings. Tradition has it that whoever gets the little ceramic figure that's baked into the cake gets to wear the crown, and well, I wasn't the one who found it. Being an apex predator has its advantages, so here I am! Oh, ah! hail the Duzzo! Ah! But your loyal servant still knows his place, so let's get on with the report. So I'm in the area where there's this wild turkey running around, and this is not a joke. Peel Regional Police are reporting this thing. An actual wild turkey in the area of, you know, Burnham Thorpe and Eglinton and all of that stuff. Explorer Drive, actually. I'm here and I'm driving through the area and I'm thinking to myself, when I hear about a turkey running amok in Mississauga, the first thing that comes to mind is Doug Ford. I'm not a big fan of turkey. I'm more of a chicken fella. The surprising thing is just how many conservatives really, they're described quite well by the word turkey. Aaron O'Toole recently said that he wanted Canadians to look in the mirror and see a conservative. But that's ridiculous. Canadians don't see a conservative when they look in the mirror. They see somebody with a heart. They see a nice person. And frankly, unless the conservatives start acting that way, no one is going to be seeing them anywhere. These are the bozos who went around arguing against giving Canadians assistance during a pandemic. That's a Republican thing. That's not a Canadian thing, and it shouldn't be a conservative thing. I remember when conservatives were concerned about Canadians, when conservatives wanted to build this country. Conservatives did. John A. MacDonald was one of them. And here's Aaron O'Toole saying we should be protecting the legacy of John A. MacDonald. Well, he's ah! all over it. Conservatives. Remember when they built things instead of just complaining about everything? M mind you, you know, we're talking more of the progressive conservative type, but even the provincial governments, which are progressive conservative, Doug Ford is one of them, they're all acting like Republicans. I mean, Doug Ford actually said he was 100% a Republican. Well, we know that's not true because he didn't leave us all to die from COVID. Anyway, the point is, I want conservatives to go back to being people we can respect again. I don't want to look in the mirror and see a conservative. I want a conservative to look in a mirror and see a Canadian because they are not acting like that these days. And that's today's road rage. Back to you, Jimmy. <laughs> by the French Corner Pastry in Mississauga, not the sponsor. Nation, I'm behind this desk every night. I'm not somewhere else.
I'm working hard trying to bring you the meat of what's going on in this land, and when I can't find meat, then I'll go for the berries of information. And if all else fails, well, there's usually garbage lying around on the street somewhere, and that's exactly where I found conservative leader and cute pudgy white thing Aaron O'Toole. Now, maybe it's because I'm not an idiot, or maybe it's because I'm a top-of-the-food-chain carnivore, but for some reason, it's very difficult for me to get an interview. So when a bear-needing one comes across a politician blathering out loud on the street, well, if he's smart, that bear pulls out his recorder and then tries to make sense of all the nonsense he just heard. So tonight, we present the first and probably last Better Know Your Member, Interview of an Interview, Bearer on the Street Edition. Jimmy? So, Aaron O'Toole, you're the new conservative leader, ready to set a new tone for the conservative brand. You've even stolen the Air Force logo to make you look new and fresh. How's it going? It's going very well. You know, our, our uh, party's very eager to get into the next election, and it looks like it's emerging into a, a two-person race. Um, there are five parties unless you've just given up on Quebec. There's other names as well, and they're all going to put their perspectives out, but it's a decision about going forward and sort of the next generation of leadership or maybe going back. You're the going back one, right? No, think about that no I, you know, I'm open to run uh, against anyone. You know, I think uh, this is about what vision we offer for the future, how we can connect with more ridings in, in Canada that we went down in. The southern Ontario, where, where I'm from, uh, is critical for our success. As a strong Ontario Conservative voice, I'm trying to get that message out. Yeah, so far that's not working. If anything, your polling is going the other direction and you'll be losing the next election too. Um, I was on the ground. I have my own assessment on why we lost. And uh, I'm learning from that. And I think we have to connect with more Canadians. So you're going to take the party to the middle? We have to be conservative. I don't think we go to the middle. I think that's what uh, another opponent in this race will be suggesting. We just go to the slight right of Justin Trudeau. That's not the answer for me. I think we need ideas for the future. By going backwards. Well, you know, principled foreign policy. Yeah, you guys were the ones who sold us out to China with that 30-year FIPA agreement. We had a very strong foreign policy under the Harper government. Respect for uh, allies like Ukraine, Israel. There's been waffling on that with the Trudeau government. I Neither of which will help us in a fight. I think the India trip, our, our diplomatic disputes over Twitter, I think... Most of your caucus lives and dies by Twitter, so be careful. I think people want to see a serious a voice on the world stage again. We don't see that under the Liberals. Yeah, I got bad news for you. The world loves Justin. Uh, our economy is now not competitive. We see uh, protests stopping resource development. We see... Do you really expect us to believe your government would be less wrong than a woke one? You have to enforce court injunctions. We have... So arrest them all and let the court sort it out, huh? But when I see people with a, a hashtag of shut down Canada and signs calling the RCMP apartheid, there is a total disconnect with some people who feel that they can take protests to a stage of actual stopping people from from working, stopping court orders, that's very disruptive. And I don't think the Trudeau government has any plan to deal with it. Yeah, neither does your boss down south. How do you stop justifiable anger? I would tell Canadians why these projects are in the national interest. So lie to them. Justin Trudeau has waffled on why the resource sector matters. Saying it's time to go with new technologies is not waffling. He never sells Canada's position as an energy superpower around the world. In fact, his first trip abroad, he mocked the resource sector in Davos. He yeah, because we're seen as massive polluters! He is someone that has diminished the manufacturing capacity in Ontario. What? No, he doesn't. We have no softwood lumber deal for forestry workers. Because of that poo-flinging orangutan down in the White House! We see, in a generally okay economy, we see tens of thousands of families feeling left out of Trudeau's version of Canada. You mean Albertans pining for the glory days of the oil boom? That's what I'm talking about. Because that sector is dying. Financiers are moving away from it. Heck, even British Petroleum is moving away from it. I think we need a Prime Minister who champions these jobs. Champion jobs in heavy polluting and dying industry, huh? That champions our role in the world as the most ethical, the most environmentally sound resource producer in the world, bar none. <laughs> the tar sands are the most environmentally harmful way of getting oil there is on the planet. 
we should be celebrating that. The Trudeau Liberals try and flip-flop on it, and I think that's leading to more and more of this stopping and closing down the oil sands and really nonsense talk. Let me get this straight. Clean air is nonsense? We need to talk about our plan to reduce emissions and to be supportive in the environment well before the election. I think one mistake we made is we waited till just before the election to release our plan. Yes, it would be nice to have more time to shred your party's ignorance. Well, the Paris Agreement allows us to use our lower emission carbon to switch emissions around the world. So LNG is one way, nuclear power is another way. Emission-free entirely, Canadian technology. Uh, this government has not supported it one iota. Nukes? Seriously? You're suggesting replacing tar sands with nukes? You're going to see more and more countries doing this, and we're behind already. And this, this sort of work stoppage and, and what we see now Again, people are angry. Chaos out there and with no direction from the federal government is going to have us even further behind. So what you're saying is... Our resources are the most ethically produced, the most environmentally sound in the world, and our innovation and our technology in the resource sector is being used around the world. This government doesn't seem to celebrate that. I think we, we have to do that. And. Where do you see conservative support going under you? Less and less each year. Well, the prevailing thought is that the Conservative Party is little more than the Prairie Party. How do you counter that? You will see even more serious divisions in this country because we have a Prime Minister who won't stand up for economic opportunity for literally hundreds of thousands, if not millions of people. More like tens of thousands, but sure. We see a Prime Minister who doesn't champion this, and that's why we've gone a few years ago to having no issues of a national unity basis, to having serious challenges. What? Harper's Ming and Jason Kenney literally pit each province against each other throughout the revamping of the federal transfer payment system, and then as Premier of Alberta, he's attacked the system he put in! I was in Western Canada, I launched my campaign in Alberta. There are frustrations, and it's largely caused by the Liberal government. Or it's caused by little Jason Kenney looking for scapegoats to distract from his own absolutely horrendous mismanagement of Alberta. So this is what I'm going to be talking about in this race. You're the one who's saying take Canada back. Isn't that backwards? The provinces will take the lead, but I've always been opposed to a carbon tax because it also makes our economy less competitive. That's actually the opposite of true. Uh, it did. We lost industries like cement and others where they shifted the jobs to the United States. The, the Liberals' the own report call it good. leakage. Leakage means jobs and investment. But you can't change that! We have a crisis of confidence not just in the resource sector. And when America has made an America requirements, there's nothing you guys can do to keep companies here. If you could, we wouldn't have lost so many companies during Harper's years! We see small manufacturers in Ontario expanding their operations in the U.S. because we're raising taxes. We're seen as com a complex regulatory environment that's not welcoming an investment. Which makes no sense. U.S. corporate taxes are higher than ours. That's why Tim Hortons came back to Ontario. I will turn that around and show that Canada is the most ethical, advanced, human rights supportive, environmental supportive place to invest and build things. So, lies. I think we want to see pride in Canada again, not the sort of virtue signaling we see from the Trudeau government. How is lying about our environmental and human rights record not virtue signaling? You're just signaling different people's virtues or different virtues for different people? You're still signaling! I would say judge his first two weeks by my first two weeks and you can see there's no coronation. Well, there's no crown big enough for that potato head of yours, so I'm not worried. The sequel to Andrew Shear, ladies and gentlemen, now back to the desk. Well, Nation, that's all for another Cold Bear Report. I promised the staff to pay them according to the likes and subscribes we get, so be sure to hit one or the other, or both. Take care and watch out for wildlife on the roads. Good night!
What are you swimming away from? What are you, what are you guilty of? What are you hiding? Don't swim away from me. I'm talking to you, damn it. Why do you people keep interfering with my comedy, for God's sakes? I'm just trying to do some interviewing here. Seriously. I don't come jumping in your pond when you're working or whatever the hell it is you do. I hate ducks. I hate ducks. Oh, hi. Um, click, click my face down there and subscribe, okay? Because I need viewers. But not you. You can suck it, duck.